Hi and welcome to Picture Me. In this video I will be demonstrating all the features of Picture Me in the standard version, not the pro version. Uh, there are some differences. Uh, I'll mention those at the end of the video but for now we'll start with just the how to get it started, how to get it set up and how to use each of the available functions. So let's um, show you my Mac and I've already started Picture Me. I can increase the size of the window so you can see a little bit more and on the left hand side you can see uh, the original picture on the right hand side the effect after the chroma key filter has been applied and um, the sliders at the top here control the chroma keying effect so um, basically you leave the U tolerance low and then increase your masking strength until you lose the backdrop the backdrop by the way can be green blue or even white other colors are possible but more difficult and of course when you use white you wouldn't be able to photograph a girl like that uh, with a white hat because the hat would disappear so always make sure that the custom that the uh, uh, people that you are taking a picture of um, are not wearing exactly the same color as your backdrop because that won't work so I have my camera connected as you can see in settings there's a Canon camera connected and that's tethered so you can test if your camera is compatible with picture me uh, by um, downloading the free camera tether app from app Forest one and that will allow you just to test if it will work with picture me pro as well picture me and picture me pro so you connect your camera with USB I've got one right there on a tripod and uh, it can take a picture and I can show that by going to picture and clicking on take picture after I look at the lens and once the picture has been taken it's transferred through the USB cable to picture me and it's chroma keyed so uh, this one looks pretty good I don't have to do anything about it if I want to use that one in the scene I go to scene select any of the built-in um, backdrops and uh, can see what the effect is of that particular picture. Now, um, the other way of loading images would not be to tether your camera. You don't have to have a camera that tethers, um, but it's the easiest way to set it up that way. You can also hook up your iPhone or your iPad as a camera. Um, you have to unlock your iPad or iPhone then and then start the camera app. And then when you click on the take picture button here, uh, your uh, iPad or uh, iPhone will take a picture so that works too but obviously an SLR camera works better the other way is to actually load a picture so you can load a picture I've got a, a picture here in the demo folder uh, which has a green backdrop and again you can see that the chroma keying algorithm can take care of removing all the areas that we don't want if it's hard to see if an, a subject is properly keyed, you can click on this backdrop and choose a different background color for that. So if I want to see white here, let me choose the white. I can do that there. And now you can see that there actually are some holes in her pants here. And that's a common thing nowadays, but this is not the kind of holes that normally are in pants. So to avoid those showing up as gaps, you can increase the tolerance until you have the entire image back again. That's the way you use those two sliders. So put your U tolerance to minimum, increase your mass strength until all the backdrop is gone. And then if you need to use U tolerance increased until you get all the uh, gaps in the photo filled up again. And again, if you go to OK, this picture is used and you can move it around, scale it. I'll explain all the features in scene later on. So the test example is just built in to show you um, how uh, the application can work if you don't have your own pictures that are uh, taken against the chroma key backdrop. So as you can see, my sliders have an effect on what preview I get. And I, once I have the preview OK, um, I basically can go to the scene. If something is not um, removable by filters, so let me just give an example of that by putting that one there and 
dragging this one down a little bit. Say you wanted to manually brush away something that's in the picture. You could do that with the eraser and then just erase right here. Now you can't see the cursor very well on a white backdrop, so let me choose a different color for that. Just a gray. Okay. And then if we do an erase, you can see the cursor and you can change the size of the eraser or uh, brush so it's easier to brush. So you can actually make a hole where there is none. So you can make a hole right here. And that would make the image transparent here as well. And you can fill that up again by just using a brush and then painting over it. It's non-destructive. So that's how you do manual adjustments. But if you have your lighting condition set up properly, you won't have to do uh, many brushing in things. The only time you have to brush in is, for instance, when the uh, subject is wearing a color in a certain area, which is the same as the backdrop. Um, then you could manually brush in that part. Or if their color of eyes happens to be exactly the same as the backdrop, you can fill in their eyes again just by placing two dots like that. Um, then the um, other features here, um, basically none I can think of. So then the next tab would be scene. So once you have your picture selected, you can take that picture over to the scene tab and in the pop-up menu you can select a backdrop. It starts off with this one telling you to select a backdrop and then you can choose any of the uh, pre-installed backdrops that are available. Now those can be pretty simple like this one it just has a backdrop but you can also have one that's a bit a little bit more sophisticated like the Rockefeller one which has a backdrop but also a um, overlay a PNG layer which is uh, imposed on top of the chroma key picture that you take. Um, you don't have to do that. You don't have to uh, use a PNG. You can just use your own backdrop uh, images without a PNG. But if you also add a PNG with the same file name, but of course with the PNG extension and being an actual PNG file, then you can have an, an, an actual overlay on top of the picture. So another example of that would be the springtime one, where the overlay is that colorful edge of roses and things like that. So we can switch that off if we want. Um, but in this case it's on, so let me switch it off. And now we just see the backdrop. So that's how you switch that off and on. Now if you want to add your own backdrops, which is a question that I've been getting a lot, even though it's not that hard. So in, in this particular version, we added the ability to add a backdrop right here. So this is to add your own background images, which have to be JPEG images. And don't make them bigger than they need to be. So if you're going to be um, using the result on Facebook, you don't need a 24 megapixel backdrop. It will just make things slow and um, difficult to transport. So use your own backdrop. And the way you do that is you click on the add backdrop. Now I've got in the demo folder here, I've got this backdrop here, it's a normal JPEG. I say load picture and now when I go to scene and choose the backdrop, I can choose that particular image that I just added and then she's on that backdrop. So that's how easy it is to add your own backdrop. It used to be a little bit more complicated. You used to be, have to go to settings and then view which would open up a folder where PictureMe stores everything. It has the backdrops, the hot folder where images come in, and the result folder. So the backdrop folder, start there, contains all the images, including the one I just copied over. So uh, let me look that one up. Uh, the one I just copied over is, uh, where is it? I cannot see it. I'm probably not looking properly. Yeah, here it is. So this is the one I just added. So it's just, it would be the same as you copying that file into this folder. So just to demonstrate, I can take it out, go back to scene, 
and now I cannot choose that image anymore because it's gone and if I go back to settings view and backdrop and drag it back in which you could also do with your own images of course uh, then if I go to scene then I can choose that particular backdrop again so that's how easy that is now uh, the other thing you can do um, in a backdrop folder is add your own uh, PNG overlays so as you can see for instance for the Glacier Park there's a backdrop and an overlay with just the Canadian flag and the file names need to be exactly the same for both files and the size should be the same the pixel size uh, but the uh, overlay should be a PNG with transparency so it should be white with only the thing that you want on top showing as a color and um, if you don't know how to make a PNG then don't bother trying to add them because you enable you'll need to be able to make your own PNGs to make this work for you because um, you want something like text there and there are many applications that can create a PNG uh, but you have to have a PNG as an overlay and a JPEG as a backdrop. Now those numbers here also mean something. Um, I won't go into the details, uh, but um, it's possible to have the default position of where the subject that you take a picture of, the chroma, chroma key picture, is actually placed on the backdrop. So it's automatically detecting where the image should go and it's also aligning that picture by the face that you select um, so if you have a face in the picture and it's off to the left or the right a bit more it doesn't matter because it will recognize the face and use that as a focal point for where to place the image if you don't define anything like these underscore values have here then the image will just be replaced in the center as you can see um, where she just comes up in the center of the image so at 50% 50% at 20% uh, of the um, image size now the uh, picture that you take you can drag so you can drag that over to wherever you want uh, you can also move it with the cursor keys and if you don't use the shift key they go at a certain speed if you want to go faster you use shift key and then it takes bigger steps so that makes it easier to manipulate the position um, it's done with the key so you don't have to use the mouse for that sometimes people don't like having to use a mouse to position stuff and they only use the mouse to click uh, and now you can just use the arrow keys to scale it you use the plus key to make it bigger and the minus key to make it smaller and if you want to go smaller steps you don't use the shift key the bigger steps you do use the shift key you can also change the scale by just using the slider and you can adjust the image itself so you can as adjust the brightness of the image the contrast of the image and the color saturation of the image so you can have a black and white image uh, put on a uh, colored backdrop or exactly the other way around so if you backdrop is black and white you can have a color picture on top of the black and white background uh, be creative with that as you want so let me put it back at the normal values again which would be zero and this one also zero so the save picture is for when you're happy with what you're seeing on the screen so you do save picture and because show result folder is open it opens the folder with the results and if I double click that picture you can see that's the picture we just saved you don't have to open that picture so if you don't show a results folder and save picture let me change it by just going here and then saving it it still saves but obviously it won't open the result folder because we told it not to if we still want to see it we can go to view result folder and now you can see we have the second one okay so what else can I say about this uh, screen not too much um, 
Yeah, if you have any questions or problems getting this, this to work, then feel free to contact me. Please don't just leave a review. It doesn't work uh, if you can't figure out how to make it work, because it does work. I've just shown you that it works. Um, but sometimes you just need a little help on how to get things set up exactly. Um, and do feel free to contact us and we'll help you. So the other thing you can do in the settings, you can go to help and that will open up um, the support link for email. And if you click again on help, it will open up a website with the um, help page for AppForce One. So here you can see information, which is um, uh, in Dutch in this case, but we can switch to English. And you can navigate to uh, a demonstration on what it does exactly and you can contact us if you want through the website as well so the other thing is um, the advantages of the pro version the pro version can do a little bit more so the pro version allows you to do images that have a higher output resolution so in this version everything is scaled down to 1000 pixels and the pro version you nothing is scaled down so you can have really high quality backdrops and high quality um, green, uh, chroma key pictures taken and combine those two. Uh, the other thing that is also available on the um, uh, pro version only is uh, printing. So you can print directly from um, Picture Me and you can do emailing directly from Picture Me. So it allows you to um, with one click just have the email or have the image printed or uh, sent as an email attachment with a standard text uh, which just makes it easier if you have a setup where you have to get things moving as fast as you can. Um, the other thing you could do with the pro version as well is um, combine several chroma key pictures against one backdrop. So in this time of social distancing uh, you can have several people uh, take place in front of the green screen and then take each of their individual pictures and then put them close together without them ever being close together and then choose your backdrop and uh, save the result or print or email the result. That's only possible with the pro version as well. Um, that is about it. If you have anything else um, that you'd like to ask that isn't covered in this video, please contact me uh, if you have any suggestions on how to uh, make this app better. Um, and then of course, um, you could consider Picture Me Pro because that's already, uh, already has more features. But if you still think more features would be, would be useful, then uh, also we're open to suggestions. And if we uh, get a request that's valid and, and uh, manageable, we'll try to add it. Okay. Um, that is it. I'd like to thank you for watching. And um, if you like Picture Me, then um, feel free to leave a positive review. If you don't, contact us and we'll try to make you feel different about it. So Picture Me, uh, just to stop uh, to, to finish, um, is available on the Mac App Store. So if you don't have a Mac, you can still get a version of Picture Me, but um, it's slightly less sophisticated and it's on the Windows 10 store. Um, so there is a version, but it doesn't work with every camera. Um, it doesn't work with all operating systems of Windows. So uh, it's a bit more limited, um, but uh, feel free to check it out. And um, for now, I'd like to thank you for watching and I wish you a good day. Bye-bye.